of Syracuse that are sophomores and one junior. I look for LSU to win the battle at the line of scrimmage. Syracuse is a slight favorite, but some critical edges to LSU. Also working with us today, Armin Katayan. He'll be on the sideline. Armin? Thanks, Tom. There's a number of interesting stories associated with this game. The biggest is, however, the effects of light 103 on the Syracuse team. The team has decided to wear patches on their uniforms in honor and memory of those classmates and students who were lost in that flight. It's their way of saying we miss you, and like the people at NBC and around the world, our hearts go out to those people, and, and we hope that everything is fine from then on in. Tom, back to you. All right, Armin, and Syracuse has uh, won the toss and is elected to receive. LSU is set to kick the ball off in the Hall of Fame Bowl from Tampa. The LSU kicker is Brown Dyke, David Brown Dyke, a junior out of Dallas, and you see the deep men for Syracuse with Walker deepest of all. Kick hits the turf and bounces to the five-yard line and returned out to the 20-yard line as the game is underway. Watkins just across the 20 where Syracuse will begin with the first offensive possession of the game. This Syracuse offense very well balanced, Joe. They have a lot of weapons. Yes, but the Todd Philcox is going to have to have his best day today. I really think that that line of scrimmage will be controlled eventually by the LSU front, and so Philcox is going to have to be awfully sharp for the Syracuse offense to be successful. Spot the ball just shy of the Syracuse 20-yard line. Hall of Fame bowl underway. Todd Philcox is the quarterback. I formation in the backfield. Philcox on the option play. Pitches it back to Drummond. And Drummond has the Syracuse first down. Still on his feet to the 35-yard line. 15-yard gain on the first offensive play of the game. The Syracuse offense can throw. They can run. Drummond is outstanding. Led by Todd Philcox, who stepped in to replace the graduated Don McPherson. Passed for over 2,000 yards. More the top receiver, Drummond and Johnston. Very good running backs. As you look at the offensive line, center John Flannery, 6'3", 280, heads a young group on the offensive front. Syracuse now with a first down at their own 35-yard line. And the give straight ahead. It's to Johnston, the fullback, Darrell Johnston who is the second leading rusher behind Drummond on this Syracuse team for a short game. Let's take a look now at the starting LSU defensive unit. It's tough against the run. They'll need a pass rush today. I'll tell you what, uh, this is one of the best defenses that they've played against, especially with Ron Ch Santo and uh, Eric Hill on the outside. But Sancho right now, and, Syracuse is doing very well. Yeah, Sancho and Hill, both all SEC. You see the defensive backs. Jackson is an All-American. Second and eight here for Syracuse. Philcox again on that option play. Pitches it again to Drummond, and he's close to another Syracuse first down. Robert Drummond will have to do the lion's share of work at tailback today after Michael Owens, the third leading rusher on this team, was suspended for disciplinary reasons. Well, if Drummond keeps getting the kind of blocking that he's getting on the outside up there, Big Pat Davis, number 87, just takes the defender out of out of the play with that kind of blocking Syracuse is going to continue to run this ball Orangemen have a first down at their own 45 yard line this drive began back at the Syracuse 20 have already advanced it to their own 45 where they have a first down again the I formation Phil Cox optioning the other way now will pass first pass of the game is going long downfield for Glover and it's incomplete Glover covered on the play for LSU by Mike Mays. Well, that shows you what a running game can do, though. They've been successful with three runs, so Todd Philcox has had some time to throw on this last play. He overthrew his receiver, and I, I might tell you that number 24, Mike Mays from LSU, was in very good position. There's the defensive cornerback. Mays, a senior out of DeRitter, Louisiana, started every game for the Tigers this year. And Dick McPherson, the Syracuse head coach in his eighth season with the Orangemen, had beautiful back-to-back -back seasons with Syracuse. Philcox drop back pass. It's complete to Moore. Rob Moore has it short of the first down into LSU territory to the 48. But this guy is some ball player. 6'2", 197. Reminds me a little bit of Jerry Rice in size. He has such, he's such a good target. Not as big as Toon of the Jets, certainly, but this man is one of the best players you'll see at this position. We'll be hearing from him a long time. Rob Moore, Associated Press, honorable mention All-American, the leading receiver on this Syracuse team. Third and three here for Syracuse. 
Here's a look at Moore, who set wide to the right. Bill Cox fakes, then fires. It's complete. It'll be another Syracuse first down. Making the grab was Glover. And Syracuse with another first down. Mike Mays making the tackle for the Tigers after Syracuse keeps the drive going. Well, that was an excellent pass by Todd Philcox. The safety for LSU, Jamie Bice, was in position, but Philcox has good accuracy. He's a 60-plus percent passer. He just got that one right in the hole that time. There you see his numbers. That's 60.2 percent best in Syracuse history. First down play. Handoff up the middle. Still going inside the 35 is Johnston. Johnston, the fullback, finally stopped by Eric Hill, one of the outside linebackers for the Tigers. Well, now, this is the second time Syracuse has tried the middle, and the sophomore center, John Flannery, handles Daryl Phillips, the nose tackle, pretty good this time. There's a good hole. Now, Flannery, at 280 pounds, can continue to overpower Phillips. That inside running game is going to be as good as the outside running game. Daryl Johnston, a typical hard-nosed fullback, got seven on that one at second and three. Drummond tackled inside the 30. Should be enough for another orange first down. Carl Dunbar, the defensive end, managed to stop him. But Drummond, with a good hole opened by his offensive line, got first down yardage. Very impressive offensive drive so far. Syracuse likes to mix things up. We've seen the pass, the play-action pass. They'll go to the screens on occasion. They have a very well-balanced attack. And so far, I tell you, Drummond's doing a job, and Michael Owens hasn't missed. But later on in the game, I think they'll miss his big play capabilities. Fourth first down of this drive. This is the ninth play. It's a pitch on the outside to Drummond, who has stopped just shy of the 20-yard line by Eric Hill. Drummond now has carried four times on this drive for 37 yards. Drummond says he can carry the load. He hasn't played that much. Here's Eric Hill, number 54, the outstanding linebacker, outside linebacker for LSU. Now, not a lot of teams challenge Eric Hill. They usually run away from him, and they run into Sancho, who does a good job. But Eric Hill, number 54, is the most gifted linebacker out there physically. Second and one for Syracuse, just shy of the 20 of LSU. Bill Cox hands straight ahead to Johnston, who powers for another Syracuse first down. They're fifth on this drive. Verge Osbury, the leading tackler for the Tigers, finally made the stop for LSU. I like seeing a big fullback hit into that line. Larry Zonka-type Syracuse fullback, you know, big Jim Brown. It's a different part of the game away from a lot of college offenses where they have the fleet backs. And these big fullbacks don't get enough recognition around the country because their numbers aren't as flashy as the halfback. But boy, are they necessary. Excellent execution. You know, the defensive end has been used, and Sancho has been used to being blocked by Johnson on the outside with that option play. This time, they get the ball to Johnson, and Dunbar, 63, well, he just lets him run by. It was a good block put on him, but by having that successful blocking by the fullback, it helps his running game. Drummond go. I guess they really don't care as long as they get this seven points on the board. They're not worried about the second half conditioning yet, Tom. Drummond has carried five times for 41 yards now. Syracuse first and goal from the LSU five. Johnston to the three, maybe to the two-yard line. Darrell Phillips, the nose tackle, made the stop after a gain of a couple. Well, you'd think 
Syracuse might try the middle of that LSU defense. They've been successful on a couple of runs, and Darrell Phillips only going 245 pounds as a nose tackle is facing John Flannery at 280 pounds. So it seems to me Syracuse might want to hit that right side where the big guys are. 14th play of this impressive drive coming up. Second and goal from the three. Drummond, touchdown. They just blow LSU off the ball on that right side and get into the end zone. Seventh rushing touchdown of the season for Robert Drummond, who has carried six times for 43 yards now on the first drive. Here's Kevin J. Green to attempt the extra point out of the hole by Philcox. Syracuse has hit 260 in a row, an NCAA record. Have a nothing lead on their first possession of the game. Orangeman now to kick off. Kevin J. Green kicking. And taken by Fuller of LSU. Across the 20 to the 22-yard line. And the Tigers now will have the offensive possession. It was uh, Wayne Williams on the return. Williams for LSU. As Tommy Hudson comes onto the field after that 26-yard kickoff return. Hudson directing this LSU offense who now try to match that opening game drive by Syracuse. Hudson, the junior, out of Matthews, Louisiana. High formation in the backfield. Fuller and Jones. Hudson to put it up. Swing pass complete to Fuller. Fuller dodges a tackler and spins forward just shy of the 30-yard line. Got four or five yards on the play. Stopped by Dan Busey. Let's take a look now at the LSU offense. Hudson, a junior, has passed for over 6,000 yards, though some feel he's had an off year with 12 interceptions. Moss, the top receiver, nearly 1,000 receiving yards. Fuller, the top rusher. The offensive line, big, didn't allow a sack in seven straight games this year, anchored by Ralph Norwood at 6'7", 270. Second and six coming up for the Tigers. Pitch it to Fuller. Eddie Fuller fighting for yardage, crosses the 30, and then is stacked up with Busey again, leading the Syracuse charge. Here's the Syracuse defense, and they're young up front, Joe. Yes, they play the run pretty well, Tom, but I tell you, they don't get enough pressure on the quarterback. At least they have it this season. These three boys right here are going to have to get back on Hudson to have a successful day defensively. Linebackers are good. Bavaro, the top tackler. And the starting secondary has allowed only two touchdown passes all season, led by All-American Marcus Paul. Third and five for LSU. Hudson's pass is complete. That'll be an LSU first down. Fuller out of the backfield is wrestled out of bounds finally by David Bavaro, but he has enough for the initial LSU first down of the game. To see what happens here with Syracuse not able to put much pressure on Hudson. Syracuse is playing his own defense, so these receivers are going to have time to find the soft spots. Number 33 on your right side, you see, just finds an empty spot over there, enough for the first down, and uh, he gets it. They must find a way to put pressure on Hudson. Look at the Syracuse linebackers on a first down LSU play. Fuller hit behind the line, falls forward to the 40, gain of about a couple. Let's go down to the side now, now with Armin Katayan. Armin? Thanks, Tom. I'm here with two guys that are pretty happy about the first score for Syracuse. Walter McPherson on my left and Norman McPherson on my right, two of the six McPherson brothers. Walter, what about that first score? Well, that was terrific. My God, it was terrific. <laughs> Norman, what about you? What was Mac like? Was he as emotional as a child as he is now? Oh, even worse. Uh, I can remember one day he came home with three pairs of pants torn from football. All right, Tom. Thanks, Armin. There are 12 Ooh. children in the McPherson family. Coach Dick, the 11th. Here's Victor Jones getting the carry, and with second effort, fights his way into Syracuse territory, but he's going to be ruled down at midfield. Terry Wooden tripped him up. He'll be ruled down at the midfield stripe after a 10-yard gain and another LSU first down. There's a look at Terry Wooden, who is uh, 
one of the top linebackers on this Syracuse unit. Well, he has four interceptions on the season as well, Tom. He's tied for the lead in that department. He's only a junior, and he gets all over the place. Excellent in pass coverage and strong enough to play against the run. Out of Hartford, Connecticut, 6'2", 228, Terry Wooden. First down, LSU at midfield. Fuller cuts up. Nice cut. Just tripped up as he got to the Syracuse 45-yard line. Bavaro got a hand on him and ma made the tackle, although it was not a form tackle, just got a foot tripped up. Yeah, well, there was some good block. And watch the right guard pull over to his left at number 79 will throw a good block to open that hole up right there. Jim Hubitz. And I tell you what, this is some well of a game so far, Tom. These guys want to keep moving the ball up and down the field. We thought both defenses might predominate. Instead, it's been an offensive game. There's an incomplete pass. And a flag down. Hodson let it go. And... Perhaps interference called. Alvin Lee was the intended receiver. And close coverage, the flag goes down. And David what, Holmes was covering. There you see Mike Archer, the LSU coach. Interference on the defense. Automatic first down, be a spot foul. Check it on the left side, see if we can pick up that interference. It's a mighty difficult call. Even uh, in the NFL, I guess a replay wouldn't do any good on this, but we're not going to see those replays that make a difference today. That was a very bad, well, I, would, I shouldn't say bad call, Tom, but if you're from Syracuse, that was definitely a questionable call. It was a close call, that's for sure. Seven yards on the penalty and an LSU first down. You see the numbers on Tommy Hudson. 39-yard line of Syracuse. On the counterplay, Eddie Fuller cuts it up again, gets about three yards. He's short of the 35 of Syracuse. Roger Karges, a reserve inside linebacker, a sophomore out of Rochester, made the tackle. Fuller did that on his own that time. His two lead blockers got out in front of Eddie Fuller, but they forgot to block anybody, and he just cut by a defender to make that gain. That was virtually on his own. Watch right here. Now you'll see the two blockers go right past the defender, and Wooden can't make the play. Number 90 he gets faked out, so that was really good running. Syracuse leading 7-0, but LSU driving, second and six. Plenty of time, no pressure on Hudson. And then the intended receiver slips. Tony Moss went down, and the pass will go incomplete. Moss was wide open. Hudson had all day to throw the ball, but they were on different pages. Moss thought he'd hook up and stop in a dead spot here, and then the ball's thrown behind him. Much he can't quite stop to get back to get the ball, you see. It was a bad pass. So it'll be third down coming up as you look at Moss, who had 957 yards receiving the fourth best year in LSU history. Hodson straight back. Across the middle, Moss is intercepted. Picked off by Marcus Paul, the All-American safety of Syracuse, and he returns it to the 30-yard line. Hudson overshot Moss, and Paul picked it off. Marcus Paul, the All-American, and Hudson having different kind of days. Paul, another... <laughs> that may have caused the interception because, hey, you're a quarterback. Your receiver comes out of the break. You can't tell if he's going to slip or not. Of course, Marcus Paul makes the good play in the return. He brought it back 16 yards. Marcus Paul from nearby Kissimmee, Florida. He said he bought 20 tickets and he signed up for another 20. He's got a lot of folks here rooting for him today. And penalty flags are down. I think Syracuse moved prematurely on their first down play and will step off five against the Orange. Dead ball, false start on the offense. First down. Well, that's the first uh, mistake that Syracuse offense has made today, Tom. Buddy Ward, the referee for today's officiating crew, and it is indeed the first mistake the Orange would have made. They marched 80 yards the first time they had the ball to take a 7-0 lead. And now Coach Mack's team with an interception, first and 15 from the 25. Johnston powers straight ahead, gets three or four yards. Daryl Johnston, who is an AP honorable mention All-American and first team All-East, 
second leading rusher on this team and one of the best fullbacks in the U.S. In fact, the Sporting News said he was the number one pure fullback in the United States. Big, strong guy, and they're continuing to, continuing to run at that right side. Now, one of the things I know is the linebacker on that side for LSU, Rudy Harmon, only weighs 212 pounds. So if they're getting some big bodies on number 58, Rudy Harmon, they're going to gain some yardage. Johnston, the up back. Drummond is the tailback as Glover goes in motion. Billcox with a pass. It's incomplete. He overshot the mark of Art Davis, or Pat Davis, his tight end just a bit. Greg Jackson was defending for LSU, and Philcox just misfiring by a foot on the attempted pass to Pat Davis. Well, how these things change the complexion of a game or a play just a foot just a few inches Todd Philcox again if he's sharp he has the open receivers that time he had an open receiver he's had a good year you know this guy only had 20 snaps prior to this season in other words he's a, a, a rookie or a freshman in there you know but he's improved the entire season they love the way he's been playing he's facing a third and 11 here drop back pass complete but short of the first down. The pass was taken complete to Davis, but short of the first down as Harmon, with some help from Osbury in the middle of that LSU defense, stopped the Orangemen shy of first down yardage. Well, that was an offensive flaw, in my opinion. Why do you send your tight end only seven yards down and hook over the middle and go to him when you need 11 yards for a first down? So, fourth down in a punting situation. Cooper Gardner in punt formation for the Orangemen. He has averaged 42 a kick. His longest, 66. And the double receivers. Young is deepest for LSU. Off the side of the foot by Gardner. And then picked up on the hop by Jackson. And Greg Jackson is finally out of bounds across the 40. On NBC, we're kicking it off with a Hall of Fame bowl with the Fiesta and the Orange to follow later today here on NBC. 7-0 Syracuse, but just a bad punt by the Orangemen. And in an evenly matched game, the coaches thought the kicking game might play a big part today, Joe. That's right. Kicking game is very important. High formation LSU, good field position on the first down play. Pitch it back to Calvin Wyndham, who's in at tailback. And Wyndham totes it to the 48-yard line. He got about six yards on the play before Chris Ingram and Dan Busey were able to haul him down. Wyndham, just a fine athlete with good quickness and strength, but he's also a good pass receiver. Footing seems to have been a problem here. Let's, Tom, go down to Armin, huh? Tom, I talked to players on both sides of the field, Marcus Paul and Tony Moss and people like that and the trainers, and there doesn't seem to be any problems with the footing. It was an isolated incident, I think, with the Moss slip. Back to you. All right, Armin, this field was voted the best in the NFL by the NFL Players Association. Here's Jay Egloff. Egloff, who's come in at fullback for LSU, is inside the Syracuse 40 for an LSU first down after a 14-yard run. David Holmes made a saving stop for the Orangemen. Big Egloff, he's kind of like Johnson in size, but he just burst through that hole with some quickness. The offensive line of LSU was able to detain uh, Syracuse just a bit, just to give him enough of a craft for Jay to slip through there. Jay, the sixth leading rusher, he'd carried for 101 yards prior to that carry for the Tigers, who have a first down. Hudson, pass, quick pass, complete. Ronnie Halliburton, the tight end to the 20 of Syracuse, 18-yard gain. Marcus Paul finally able to haul down Halliburton, 6'5", 225. Well, you know they're happy. He's only caught 13 balls this season. There's been some talk about his hands. Look at the left side to the middle of the screen here. Hudson does a good job of getting the ball to him quickly while Hudson was off balance, and Halliburton has to be happy with the catch. First down LSU at the 20 of Syracuse. Orangeman leading 7-0. Two minutes left in the first quarter. Pitch it back to Wyndham. Wyndham with blockers in front, cuts up and gets it inside the 15-yard line of Syracuse. Got about five yards on the play. Keith Freiburg, outside linebacker for the Orangemen, able to stop Wyndham after he got a pretty good gain on the play as Coach Mike Archer coming with two fresh running backs and doing a good job on this series. Well, we talked about the depth earlier in the opening, and in that second half, it's going to play a role because Syracuse, as good as they are, their front 22 can play with anyone, but they're slim after their starters. Second and six for the Tigers at 
to Syracuse 16. Hodson hands it back to Wyndham. Not much there for Wyndham that time. A lot of blue jerseys pouncing on him after a gain of one or two. Freiburg and Bavaro again leading the charge for the Orange. And it'll be third down coming up for the Tigers. Well, it's been a pleasant day for these teams and their two coaches. In fact, we've enjoyed visiting with Coach McPherson of Syracuse and Coach Archer of LSU. A little difference in ages, but not much difference in results. And Coach McPherson says he marvels at Archer. Such a young man with major responsibility and does such a great job. And off straight ahead to Egloff. Egloff will be close to the first down. Stacked up by the center of the Syracuse defense. They'll have to unpile the bodies and see if he got enough. DeRiggy, the nose guard, and Busey, one of the inside linebackers, at the bottom of the stack. You know, I kind of get the feeling that when this game started, LSU wasn't quite ready or as ready as Syracuse was. Syracuse kind of dominated them early. Uh, LSU, of course, played a tough schedule this year. Some before the season said it was the toughest in the country, and they may have been a little overconfident, Tom, even though they are a two-point underdog today. LSU feels like they are the better team. Just a bit short of the first down, so on fourth down, David Browndock is on to attempt a field goal of 29 yards. He's hit 19 of 23 this season. And uh, before he can get the kick off, the first quarter done at the 11-yard line of Syracuse. Before the quarter ended, they had lined up for a field goal attempt. Now Coach Archer, given time to think about it, is going to go for it on fourth and one. Jones, the running backs here. Straight ahead to Jones, and Victor Jones is thrown back for the Syracuse defense. It'll depend on the spot of the ball. Busey and Wooden led the charge for Syracuse. Let's see the spot. Well, I don't think he made it. I don't know where they're going to spot it, but that was some fine hitting by that Syracuse defense. They're going to bring it out and measure. It's going to be close. What do you think about the decision to go for it on fourth down? I like the decision. The only problem was it may not have worked, you know? Early in the game, you have an opportunity like this to get a few inches. You have a lot of confidence in your offensive line, so you want to give them the opportunity to take advantage of this field position. They held. They did not make it, and Syracuse takes over on downs. So and now it's a bad call, Tom. <laughs> Coach Archer elected to go for it and came up short. They couldn't get the yard. And now Syracuse holds and takes over, protecting a 7-0 lead. 14-54, 8-3, Syracuse 9-2. And, and uh, just underway in the second quarter, Syracuse with a 7-0 lead. Syracuse band on hand. In fact, all the fans enjoying a sunny, beautiful week in the Tampa Bay area. Some high school bands here as well. The Hall of Fame Bowl kicking off Championship Monday on NBC. First down, Syracuse, after holding LSU on fourth and one, they start from their own 11. Johnston powers ahead for a couple. Eric Hill and Verge Osbury, the one and two tacklers. Osbury one, Hill two, making the stop for LSU. Here's how the first quarter stacked up statistically, Joe. Well, I'd say it's a pretty even game so far statistically, but you know the only place it counts with numbers is up on the scoreboard. And right now Syracuse has seven and LSU, has, well, they don't have any. They came close. They got it all the way to the Orange 11-yard line, but Syracuse held on fourth and one, and they lead 7-0. Drummond, good running by Drummond across the 20 to the 21-yard line and close to a first down. Ron Sancho, the all-SEC linebacker for LSU, Able to make the tackle, but it'll be close to the first down. Let's see. Wait a minute, hold it. The officials are eyeballing it, and they say first down Syracuse. Drummond has carried seven times now for 50 yards. And here's Ron Sancho, LSU's all-SEC linebacker. Well, Sancho's one fine player. He graded out very high this year. Teams go in his area around his end, and he makes the plays. Sancho, he's a senior right now, and he's played some excellent football for him. Was three times the SEC Player of the Week this season. Here's Phil Cox on the option, tackled from behind as Sancho showed us his speed that time. 
Well, I, I think, folks, that that picture ought to tell you something about this young man. He's got a lot of desire, a lot of drive, and an instinct for the football as well as speed. He runs the quarterback down from the backside. He does have some speed. He took an interception 20 yards for a touchdown against Texas A&M earlier this year. And was National Player of the Week against Alabama when he had 13 tackles and forced a fumble. That one was for a loss of a yard. Second and 11 for Syracuse. Bill Cox under pressure, dumps it complete to Johnston. Johnston gets to the outside and bangs ahead to the 30. He got about 10 yards on the play. He'll be a yard short of a first down. Greg Jackson finally comes over to get him out of bounds. Well, now, this is what we touched on earlier about this Syracuse offense. They have such a diversified offense. Sure, Sancho is back there, but Syracuse wants him back there because they want to drop the ball out here to Johnston on the screen and get his huge lineman out in front. Really good execution. Phil Cox has completed four of his first six passes for 32 yards. Phil Cox audibles about 70% of the time. He has a choice of plays as he comes to the line, and he'll choose one about 70, 75% of the time. This one is the option. Phil Cox still has it. Cuts up short of the 35. He got about three yards on the play. Rudy Harmon made him keep the ball, then made the tackle. That's what Syracuse wants to do, get in those short yardage third down situations. They don't want to get in a long passing situation where LSU can try and put some pressure on them. So far, their offense has really been smartly operated and directed by Todd Wilcox. Phil Cox getting a first down on that play, as we remind you, coming up Sunday, starting at 12 o'clock noon Eastern time with NFL Live, the AFL Championship game from Riverfront Stadium in Cincinnati. The Buffalo Bills against the Cincinnati Bengals. The winner moves on to the Super Bowl, which will also be seen here on NBC. Phil Cox completes the pass to Davis, the tight end. And Davis has a gain of about seven. Jamie Bice, the strong safety, gets him down. But again, Phil Cox on the money as he spots his tight end. And Syracuse continues to move the ball. This drive began on their own 11. Look at Phil Cox checking the playlist around his wrist for the call here. Second down, three. On the option, pitch it to Drummond. Drummond has the Syracuse first down. Twists forward to about the 47-yard line. Jamie Bice wrapped around him and finally able to get Robert Drummond to the turf. Strong, hard running. Now, on these option plays, the quarterback doesn't have to make a big decision. If a man is on him, simply pitch the ball. Here it's a decent fake. Here comes Sancho, so get rid of the ball. Had Sancho gone out to Drummond, then Phil Cox would have kept it. This is just great agility, strength, and balance displayed by Drummond. And Drummond is going to have to go all the way because his backup, Michael Owens, brother of Billy Owens, the Syracuse freshman basketball star, suspended for this game for disciplinary reasons. Bill Cox now will throw. Man wide open, and the pass is complete again. This one to Glover, and Glover into LSU territory, down to the 33-yard line. That's the 10th first down for Syracuse in the first quarter and a half of play. Because of the success of this running play and option play, Syracuse has time. Bill Cox throws a pass out there that Glover just makes a great diving catch on. 19 yards on the gain, and another Syracuse first down. The Syracuse offense showing us a lot of weapons here in the first half. They lead 7-0. 10 minutes, 57 seconds left in the first half. Tom Hammond, Joe Namath, Armand Katayan at the Hall of Fame Bowl in Tampa. Flag down as Drummond has enough for a Syracuse first down if they don't call it back. Eric Hill made a saving tackle, or Drummond might have gone all the way. But well, what LSU has to do right now, what is that? An, uh, uh, a That's big orange. What, a big orange? <laughs> Boy, this week has been full of citrus and sunshine, hasn't it? It's been a lot of fun Offsides. down here. On the defense, decline, first down. Sancho appeared to be offsides that time. LSU definitely wants to hold Syracuse to three points here. I know Coach Archer figures that if he could keep this game close in that third and fourth quarter, that depth of this strong LSU team should start to take control. But while these teams are played on an even basis here so far, they're not tired. Syracuse is whipping them. First down at the 23. 
On the option, Philcox tackled for a loss. He lost two back to the 25-yard line. Carl Dunbar, the defensive end, played the option beautifully that time. He sure did. Carl's been quiet so far because he's been getting blocked, but that time he just played off the block and came in nicely. This is the kind of penetration you need from your defensive lineman to disrupt the option play. You see, Todd Philcox didn't want to option off Dunbar. That wasn't his man. Dunbar just fought off the block and got penetration to foul that play up. Dunbar out of Opelousas, Louisiana. Interesting to watch him at the beach in a team outing the other day as he took a look at the ocean and the sand for the first time in his life. Fascinating. Pass is complete to Moore. Moore, fighting for yardage, will be thrown back to about the 20-yard line. Mike Mays at the bottom of the stack for the Tigers. Moore had his jersey half torn off, but he made the catch. And Mike Mays had all he wanted to handle in Rob Moore, too. And Rob Moore gets out there one-on-one -on -one with you. Buddy, you better be mighty careful. And Mike Mays has given him plenty of room and then comes up and gets an excellent football position. Mays with excellent balance that time and wouldn't let Moore get around him. Moore with 44 catches, a Syracuse record for a sophomore receiver. He was an all-conference lacrosse player in high school. Third down play, Phil Cox in trouble and swamped on by white jerseys as he tried the option again and Eric Hill using that speed from an outside backer spot didn't let the play get started. Well, I know defensive coordinator for, there's Eric Hill right now. The defensive coordinator must be happy for Eric Hill and his defense. They did exactly what they had to do that time and stopped Syracuse from a touchdown drive. Pete Jenkins is the Syracuse defensive coordinator and he has a lot of confidence in this bunch out there. Fourth down for Syracuse. Kevin J. Green is on to attempt a field goal. It'll be 38 yards. Phil Cox will hold. Green has hit 15 of the stadium. And you know, Tom, there was no luck about this 10-point Syracuse score. They drove right down the field with efficient offensive football, and they rose up on a fourth and one to stop LSU. So Syracuse is playing an excellent game. Here's Green's kick. Taken by Fuller. Fuller with a good return is out to the 25-yard line. Vincent Fuller made a good return of the kickoff. And for LSU, this is a normal thing for the Tigers. Usually in the second quarter, they get Gidry on for at least a series to replace Hudson. Gidry with a handoff on their first play and not much there for Eddie Fuller. In fact, he's thrown back after he got barely to the line of scrimmage. The 1989 Hall of Fame Bowl is brought to you by Right Guard Sports Stick from Gillette. Anything less would be uncivilized. By UPS. For guaranteed overnight delivery from coast to coast, UPS runs the tightest chip in the shipping business. By Nabisco Brands. At Nabisco, we make products that make friends. And by Mazda Cars and Trucks, including the all-new Mazda MPV. Tom Hammond and Joe Namath, Armin Katayan at the Hall of Fame Bowl. Mickey Gidry just throwing a strike to Eddie Fuller for 26 yards and an LSU first down. Gidry with a stronger arm than Hodson puts the ball perfectly on target in there to Eddie Fuller. Once again, Syracuse didn't get any pressure back on there. You know, the philosophy, there's Eddie Fuller, by using Gidry, he gives him a chance to get ready for later in the game, gives a, a Hudson a chance to get on the sidelines and watch what things are happening out there. There's Gidry, the fifth-year senior. They say he has a stronger arm than Hudson. Pitches this one back to Fuller. Tough yardage again as Fuller cuts forward for a couple before Dan Busey and David Holmes get him down. Let's go to Armin Katayan. Armin? Thanks, Tom. I'm here with Raymond and Mary Hudson. Raymond, you're not surprised by this move at all to Gidry, right? No, not at all. This is something they've been doing for three years. It's worked. Mary, what about the end? Tommy's had the ability to bring the club back time and time again. Oh, I think we're on our way back. Tom, Joe? All right, Armin, there is uh, Tommy Hudson on the sideline. The coaches say it helps him to come over and sort of see how the game is going from that perspective while Gidry is on the field. Gidry with a complete pass to Victor Jones. Jones picks up about six yards. He'll be short of the first down. Chris Ingram, whom the Syracuse coaches say is the best athlete in their secondary, comes up to make the stop. Well, they have a senior secondary core back there for Syracuse. They don't make mistakes. They've been in tight games for four and five years now. These fellas are, are well-schooled and well-experienced. 
Gidry has the Tigers on the move, but facing a third and four here. They trail 10-0 with just over six minutes left in the first half. Gidry under pressure. He's going to run with it. And he's got a first down to the 35-yard line of Syracuse. That's another dimension that Mickey Gidry adds when he comes into this LSU offense. It went for nine yards and a Tiger first down before Bavaro and Wooden chase him down. Well, Gidry and Hudson, well, Hudson's looking out there with the coach. They wanted to get that ball into Tony Moss that time. Gidry seems to be hurt. He has a right shoulder he's carrying in a tender manner. Let's see if we can tell what happened when he hit the ground. Now, he's trying to find Tony Moss, but 28 Jeff Mangrum from Syracuse is all over him, so Gedry smartly makes the first down. Let's see if he falls and hits on that right shoulder. There he goes down. He did hit hard, and Gedry out of the game. Here's Hodson now to see if he can keep it going. Pitch it back to Hodson. The flea flicker pay. It's well covered, and a pass is intercepted. Intercepted by David Holmes, who wasn't fooled by the flea flicker at all. Intended for Tony Moss, but Holmes, Joe, had perfect position. He did. He didn't bite on that flea flicker fake at all, and I'll tell you why. He has the experience back there. We just mentioned this senior core of defenders. They've seen everything. They won't be full. Gidry, who had the Tigers moving, flexing that right shoulder. He went down on it hard and had to leave the game just when he had the offense going. Now Syracuse takes over at its own nine-yard line. Straight ahead is Daryl Johnston, the tough running fullback. Daryl Phillips, the nose tackle, makes the stop for LSU. The Tigers, on their possession so far in the first half, have had two interceptions, a punt, and on fourth and one, couldn't make it. So the LSU offense has moved the ball, but come up short. Give credit to that Syracuse defense. They're the ones uh, that have been stopping LSU, sure. Hodson has been intercepted, and he missed on one other pass, but uh, it's been the Syracuse defense that's been doing the job. Todd Philcox, meanwhile, is 7 of 9 for 64 yards. Robert Drummond gets a short gain on the play. Eric Hill and Clint James led the charge for LSU. Well, don't forget, the championship Monday continues today. Coming up after our game will be the Fiesta Bowl as Notre Dame number one against West Virginia number three, probably to decide the national championship. And then waiting in the wings, don't forget the Orange Bowl with powerful Miami meeting potent Nebraska. Two great games coming up after us here on Championship Monday. Third and five here for Syracuse from their own 14. Phil Cox on the draw. It's Drummond, or no, it's Johnston carrying the ball, and Carl Dunbar is doing a good job in the game for LSU. Celebrates after making that stop. Once again, I'm curious to see if LSU's defense in that second half, especially later in the first half, is going to start to take control of the line of scrimmage. They have a veteran bunch out there, upperclassmen, and they're going against a young offensive line and a thin offense, uh, depth-wise, of Syracuse. Cooper Gardner, who had one off the side of his foot for only 27 yards earlier, standing just in his own end zone. Young and Jackson are deep for LSU. Jackson takes it at the 45, tries to get to the outside behind the wall, shakes a tackler, and then is tripped up at midfield. 40-yard kick, five yards on the return by Greg Jackson, with Kinnon making the stop on special teams for Syracuse. Tigers making Gidry with that injured right shoulder. He has his pads and his jersey off. He had hit his only two passes, and it sparked the Tiger drive, but then was injured. Now on the sideline is Hudson back at the controls. Play action pass. Hudson has his man, and it's dropped. Windham out of the backfield. Had it in his hands, but couldn't hold it. He had beaten Freiburg, the linebacker, on the crossing pattern. Well, when you get in these big games against these kind of quality competition, every one of these bowl games today, any team can beat another one. You've got to make those plays. Wyndham can't afford to be dropping the ball. That would have been a first down, a, a good 10, 11-yard gainer. So you've got to come up with the big plays against these fine teams to be successful. Tommy Hodson sputtering a bit in the first half. Three of seven, 28 yards. He's had two picked off. Syracuse leads LSU 10-0 with 3.21 left in the opening half. Hodson chased out of the pocket, and it's complete to Wyndham this time. 
He makes it for about a nine-yard gain just short of the first down. Dan Busey chased him out of bounds, stopping the clock with 3.16 remaining. There is a penalty flag down. I think LSU is going to get a New Year's present here. They may have roughed up Hudson a little bit, but I like Hudson going back out there to Wyndham. After he just dropped the pass, that's got to do something for his confidence. Ripping the passer on the defense. First down, tack on. So tack it on to the nine-yard pass completion as they step off a roughing the passer penalty against Syracuse. There's Mickey Guidry on the sideline heading toward the locker room. These quarterbacks are pretty fragile, folks. They don't have the kind of bodies the running backs have and big fullbacks. And that last play, I couldn't tell if it was really hard roughing on Hots in that time, but they need to protect the quarterback. Spoken by a man whose knees still creak when he walks. First down play for LSU. It's a draw play to Egloff. Egloff didn't get much. Maybe back to the line of scrimmage. Terry Wooden not fooled on the draw as he made the Syracuse tackle. Let's go to the sideline. Armin? Tom, things are going from bad to worse for LSU. Obviously, you just saw Mickey Guidry going off. I spoke to him just briefly, and the word he used was x-ray. So it looks like uh, he's going to be in the locker room getting that looked at real closely, but it doesn't look good at this point. So Mike Archer with 18 wins, four losses, and a tie in his two years plus at LSU, taking the Tigers this year to their 28th bowl appearance, which ties Georgia for sixth best in football history. Hudson, man across the middle is open. It's Moss. Moss with that patented spin move. Can't get away, though, from the Syracuse defense. He's to the 20 and short of the first down. Holmes and Busey were latched on and didn't let Moss spin away. You give Hudson some time back there. Hudson, he's going get to get the ball to these good receivers. Again, this has been Syracuse's problem on defense, putting pressure on the quarterback. Here you see Tony Moss coming up. Now watch the spin, folks. He's kind of patented this thing down here in uh, LSU. And uh, he uses that spin more than anybody I've seen around the films that I've looked at. Inside the two-minute mark on a third down play. Wyndham cuts up. Good run. He's at the five. Touchdown. Calvin Wyndham, the sophomore out of Orlando, Florida, with a 19-yard run for the first LSU score of the game. A five-yard Tiger drive gets them on the board. The right side of that offensive line, led by Jim Hubix and Robert Packnett, control the line. You see the good surge and a good hole in there for Wyndham to break through. Brown Dyke. Hitch still in the first half because that drive engineered with two fresh running backs in the game for LSU. That's right. This heat can wear you out, and I think Syracuse, without that backup strength, could be in trouble the second half. Kevin D. Green returns the kick for Syracuse. Not a good kick by Brown Dyke. The Orangemen will have the ball at their own 30-yard line. Darrell Williams made the tackle for LSU after a nine-yard return. This is an important series for Syracuse. They'd like to advance the ball so they could take some momentum in at halftime. You know, the teams that go in at halftime usually come out with a lot of fire that second half. That was a good hit right there. They come out with a lot of fire, and I think that the teams that finish the first half well usually win the second half. Here's the touchdown once again. Now, where? look at this hole right here. Wyndham's able to get right through that hole made by his offensive line and put on some good moves. And there's a, an offside call against LSU. Darrell Phillips came charging across the line, and unless he was drawn off, it'll be a five-yard step off against the Tigers. Well, he shook his Dead he ball. Encroachment on the defense. First down. So he, he's telling the official, look, I didn't mean to do it, man. Give me a break, you know? <laughs> That's the first LSU penalty, and it's against the senior, Darrell Phillips, out of Franklin, Louisiana. Number four tackler on this team. He's had a good year. All-SEC on the coaches' all-SEC team for the second year in a row. First and five now for Syracuse. Bill Cox. One-handed catch by Drummond. Shakes one tackler and gets it back to the line of scrimmage. Daryl Phillips finally tackled him. Carl Dunbar was in there on the play as Drummond made a one-handed catch, but then had to contend with several Tiger defenders. Awesome. 
and LSU calls for a timeout. It looked like Philcox wanted one, and LSU beat him to the punch. LSU calls a timeout with a minute 35 left in the first half. Syracuse holding that 10-7 lead. I'll tell you, I'm a little surprised by this timeout. As efficient as the Syracuse offense has been, you know, I'd kind of like that clock to keep running if I were on defense and be happy that I've just scored a touchdown and get in just uh, three points down. But by uh, stopping the clock here with the timeout, uh, I think they're giving Syracuse uh, more of an opportunity to move the ball. LSU taking the timeout and Syracuse with a full complement of three. There you see Coach McPherson in that blue blazer. Now it's 80 degrees here in Tampa today, but that's a tradition. He wears that buttoned up blue blazer every game since last season when they had such a great undefeated year. It's got a lining of orange silk that was made from the robe that uh, Sugar Ray Leonard wore when he fought in the Carrier Dome at Syracuse. And it's a good luck omen. Coach McPherson, no matter what the temperature is, wears that buttoned up wool blue blazer on the sideline. <laughs> now, don't misunderstand things he's not superstitious at all you know he just says what's working why change it why fix it is orangeman with a second and six here from their own 35 yard line leading 10 7 minute 35 remaining first half counter play drummond picks his way forward for five he'll be close to the first down eric hill gets credit for the tackle and they'll spot the ball it looks just short perhaps they'll measure well, they ran a good five or six seconds off the clock before the referee finally did stop it to take the measurement. Going to be really close, Tom. Just a matter of inches, I believe. There's Todd Phil Cox, the senior out of Norwalk, Connecticut. He'd thrown only 10 passes prior to this 1988 season, but he had been a holder for two years, and his dad said that sort of kept his interest up. He was patient. He got a chance to play sparingly, and... He's done a great job. And he's improved, Tom. As the season has, has worn on, he's improved. It's uh, something about getting out there in the live action, getting up to tempo, because in practice, you don't see the same kind of tempo by the defense as you do out in the field. So he's improved uh, vastly this season. Just short of the first down, it's third and inches. Phil Cox, with the sneak, picks up the Syracuse first down. Clock will stop as they reset the chains. John Flannery, the center, 6'3", 280 pounds, leading the way for Philcox. Syracuse right up on the line of scrimmage. Now they call a, a timeout, Tom. That surprised me a little bit. Some confusion down there. Coach McPherson, you could see, was yelling onto the field, and they finally do stop the clock at a minute 16. But had they time out, uh, first time out for Syracuse, they have two left. Yeah, had they been prepared uh, at this point, I don't think they would have need to uh, spend a time out here. They got the first down, and the clock was stopped for the first down, as they do in college ball, and uh, they should have had a play ready, ready to go to save that time out. Syracuse taking the opening kickoff, marching 80 yards for a touchdown, leading 7-0, up the lead to 10-0 after a field goal. LSU had moved the ball in the first half, but came up short on the scoreboard, finally getting, a couple of minutes ago, their first touchdown to make it 10-7 Syracuse with a minute 16 left here in the first half. Mickey Guidry, their backup quarterback, had sparked a drive, and went down heavily on his right shoulder after scrambling for a first down and had to leave the field has been taken in for x-rays and won't be available we assume for the rest of the game Syracuse with a first down at the 42 Bill Cox straight back to pass being chased and he'll be sacked Eric Hill sacks Phil Cox back at the 27 yard line a loss of 15 Daryl Phillips the nose tackle also came in there to put the pressure on and after the big defensive play LSU calls its second timeout to stop the clock with a minute two remaining second sack of the day for the Tigers well you have to give credit to that Tigers secondary covering the receivers downfield now Phil Cox may have been able to get away from the normal linebacker a norm linebacker speed but meantime, Eric Hill is faster than most linebackers. Here's Glover, and he appears to be wide open. He's waving. The only problem is Phil Cox is on the right side of the field, and he can't get back to the center left side. 
Joe, how important is that pressure on a quarterback in terms of overall pass defense? Oh, it's a nightmare for a quarterback and the best gift the secondary linebackers could have on defense. There's not a quarterback in the game professionally, collegiately, high school, junior high that can be as efficient when he's getting those defensive people rushing him, hitting him, knocking him down. You know, you get in the quarterback space and you cause all kinds of problems, not just physical problems for the quarterback, but he can't see downfield sometimes. It throws his timing off. Pressure is the ba best pass defense there is. Does it uh, ruin your rhythm for the rest of the game, even when pressure isn't there? <laughs> well, when pressure's not there, it doesn't ruin your rhythm at all. You want that from now on. Yes, yes, Second yes, and 25 yes. for the Orange Men. Bill Cox will pass. Plenty of time. But he misfires, intended for Davis, his tight end. The pass behind him. Incomplete with 56 seconds left. Another example we mentioned earlier, Todd Fieldcox needs to have a good day, his best day for Syracuse to be successful in the outcome. And that particular pass, he had an open receiver and he missed him. Now, I don't know what's going to happen after this, but because of the pass, Syracuse is in a, a tough situation. As you saw, Fieldcox has hit on 8 of 11. He had six in a row before that incomplete pass. And it's third and 25. Draw play. Drummond. They pounce on him at about the 31-yard line. Rudy Harmon, not fooled by the draw, and LSU again stops the clock with a timeout. That's the final LSU timeout. It comes with 48 ticks of the clock left here in the first half. Now we have another phase of this game, the kicking game coming into play once again. And as we mentioned earlier, in a close game, the kicking game can be the deciding factor. Missed field goals, good punt returns, blocked punts, those kind of things usually have a major bearing on the outcome, Tom. And Gardner has been inconsistent. I guess the best way to describe his two efforts, one covered 40, one was 27 yards. And you'll need to get off a good punt here. Or LSU will have a chance to get some points before halftime. Greg Jackson is the single safety as Gardner is ready to kick it for Syracuse. See that black foot on his kicking foot. Black shoe on his kicking foot. And there's Jackson deep, standing at about his own 40. Good kick this time by Gardner. Jackson retreats and still can't get it. He lets it bounce, and it's going to be a great punt down to the five-yard line where it's down. A 63-yard kick by Cooper Gardner. Well, that's how the kicking game can help you, too. Now they put LSU in a really bad position. Watch Gardner hit this thing. It just took off a nice spiral and carries all the way over the safety's head. <laughs> he can't get to the ball to run it back at all. Greg Jackson was back there, but he wasn't nearly as deep enough. He didn't think it, Gardner would punt it that far. Great effort by Gardner, the senior out of West Haven, Connecticut. Officially 62 yards on that kick. So LSU backed up now to its own... Almost six-yard line, 34 seconds left. Will they just run out the clock? I would think so, Tom. They should run it out anyway, not take any chances down here. Hand the ball to Victor Jones, and Jones runs it across the 10 to the 13-yard line. And the clock continues to tick away, approaching the 20-second mark. Well, that punt certainly does change the momentum factor. Had it not been a good punt, a good, decent return anyway, LSU would have been carrying that momentum. But that punt rolling dead at the five gave the defense, the entire Syracuse team, a big lift that time. And we won't run another play before the first half will come to an end. Hall of Fame Bowl in Tampa, Florida. The first half in the books with Syracuse leading LSU 10-7. Let's go to Harvard the first half. The, Mac, your assessment of the first half. Big punt at the end there for you. I, yeah, the great punt. I thought that we got out of sync on offense. I thought we started real well. I thought the defense was doing real well. We had two bad punts that hurt us off field position. Two Harness on it, and it drew back together in place, and I've never had a problem with it since. So it can certainly be overcome, and I think Mickey Gidry should look at it with a positive attitude. Gidry had the Tigers on the move when he was injured and had to leave, and Hudson came on to replace him and threw an interception that killed the drive. 
Syracuse will kick off to open the second half. 10-7, the Orangemen leading the Tigers as we get the second half underway. Wayne Williams and Vincent Fuller are deep for LSU as Kevin J. Green toes it up for Syracuse. And the kick taken by LSU. It's taken by Fuller, and Fuller is stopped at about the 25, 26 yard line where LSU will put the ball in play. Roger Karge is down on special teams for the Syracuse Orangemen making the stop. He was special team player of the week against Navy this year. And there are the numbers on Hudson. Five of nine, 45 yards and the two pickoffs. How do you assess his first half, Joe? Well, he's not happy about it. I can promise you that. Anytime you throw an interception, whether it's a good defensive play or a poor pass, you feel badly about it. He needs to get on track. LSU with Fuller and Jones in the backfield. And the handoff to Fuller. And he's hit immediately. He's slipped down and is dropped at the 25-yard line. Dan Busey right there to make the stop for the Orangemen. Busey, the second leading tackler on the team with 107. Started every game this year. His biggest game against Ohio State when he had 13 tackles. He was the Ohio State champion pole vaulter back in his high school days in Mentor, Ohio. Play action pass. Hudson with plenty of time and delivers it complete in a tough hit. And driven back after the completion. I believe it's Halliburton at the bottom of that stack. It is. Holmes and Freiburg really delivered a blow to Ronnie Halliburton after he made the reception. Yes, Darrell Holmes put on a good lick, but meantime, look at this pass protection afforded Hudson back there. This offensive line does a good job, keeps 67 Derigi off him, and Holmes puts a good hit on. Once again, this defensive front of Syracuse must put pressure on Hudson to be successful defensively. Halliburton, who made the reception, goes out, and Willie Williams is in a tight end for the Tigers. Talk about that offensive line of LSU. They went seven straight games without allowing a sack at one stretch of the season. Hudson again to Moss. Moss has got it. He's at the 35. And finally wrestled down at the 25-yard line. Tony Moss makes the catch for 42 yards. Now, this is his ability. He's on the right side of your screen right now. The pass is just perfect. I mean, it's right there in Moss's head. It's a fortunate thing for Syracuse that he didn't break this one all the way because he's an excellent runner once he gets the ball in his hands. Former tailback in high school and finally dragged down by the jersey. Moss described by his coaches as an artist after he catches the ball. That one, though, intended for Moss. Too far out of his reach and out of bounds, incomplete. It'll be second and ten. Moss, his dad was in the Army. He was born in the Philippines and spent three years in Germany. And he said he learned to run so well because he'd be scared coming home late at night through the forest and used to run trying to dodge the trees. <laughs> well, the trees, I know, had to be pretty large, but I think these football plays out here move a little better than the trees. I tell you, I talked with the receiver coach for LSU, Jerry Sullivan, and he says he doesn't have to do a whole lot in coaching Moss. Moss is gifted, naturally gifted. He's helped him with the game, but it's all just natural, good athletic ability. Victor Jones for LSU. Keeps the legs driving and pounds inside the 20, down to the 17-yard line of Syracuse. Third carry of the day for Victor Jones. He's racked up 25 yards. Terry Wooden hauled him down that time. It'll bring up a third down situation for LSU. Zachary, Louisiana, home of one of my old buddies, uh, Washington Redskin quarterback Doug Williams. The Bayou Bullet. Victor Jones gained 3,100 yards as a high school player. Mike Archer looks on third and two for his Tigers. Three wide receivers to the left. Hudson for the end zone. Incomplete intended for Fuller. And it'll be fourth down for LSU. Bavaro and Holmes recovering on the play for Syracuse. There's a penalty marker down, a flag on the play. Holding on the offense. Now let's see what Syracuse does. If they decline the penalty, it'll be fourth down. If they take the penalty, Tom, they'll be moving them back a good ways. It would be a more difficult field goal drive if 
for a field goal try if Syracuse could hold them once again on third down. On the offense, still third down. So Archer and company will get a chance as McPherson takes the penalty. It'll give Hudson and his receivers a chance again to try to pick up the first down. Sure, this decision could backfire on Coach Mack. Uh, you have some explosive receivers and runners on that LSU sign, and Totson getting a lot of time to throw the pass. Uh, this was a tough decision to make. They need 12 yards to pick up a first down now. Moss is in motion. Hodson complete. Moss made the catch, but he'll be short of the first down by about two yards. Jeff Mangrum made sure Moss didn't get first down yardage. It'll be a 10-yard gain, and once again, we'll bring up fourth down. And once again, the emphasis is back on the kicking game. So important. It's uh, overlooked by so many casual football fans, but the fans that keep up with the game know the importance of a good kicking game. Good coverage, accurate field goal kicker, good punter. Right now, it's the field goal game. David Browndike from 35 yards away. Chris Mook is the holder. Brown Dyke, the left foot at Soccer Stadium. The Hall of Fame Bowl tied at 10, LSU and Syracuse. Brown Dyke kicks it off for LSU. Taken on the hop by Walker. And Walker finally tackled across the 30-yard line where Syracuse will put it in play with a first down. The 1989 Hall of Fame Bowl is brought to you by Mazda Cars and Trucks, including the all-new Mazda MPB. By Gold MasterCard, the world's number one gold card, Gold MasterCard. By the U.S. Postal Service. And by the U.S. Army. Learn how to get an edge on life. Be all you can be. 11 minutes, 34 seconds left in the third quarter. LSU 10, Syracuse 10. First possession of the second half for the Orangemen. On the option play, the pitch is back to Drummond. And Drummond knocked out of bounds after picking up a Syracuse first down. Jamie Bice chased him out, but a 13-yard gain for Drummond on his first carry of the second half. Well, the score is tied. Syracuse tied with an SEC team is sort of a touchy subject, Carmen. Tom and Joe, you know how coaches are always talking about playing for a tie, so in the spirit of the occasion, I brought a couple of one, and I thought I'd donate them to the cause. Actually, they're my favorite tie, so I hope the game doesn't end with a tie. <laughs> Last year, Auburn and Syracuse wound up in a 16-16 tie at the Sugar Bowl, and I think Coach McPherson, seeing Pat Dye of Auburn go for the tie instead of the win, still a little upset. On the option play, Phil Cox pitches back to Drummond, trying the other side. And again, some pretty good yardage across the 50 into LSU territory before Ron Sancho chases him down. But one of the reasons this play has been working so much is the tight end, number 87. Watch his block. He gets out here to the left side of your screen, and he's just been doing a good job. Pat Davis, and he's able to play this or open up the hole. Now, Sancho tried to play in between a linebacker from LSU and got caught in between. He couldn't make the play. There's Davis, 6'3", 257 pounds. Second and five. Drummond has almost gained 100 yards now, 96 on the day. Play action pass. Bill Cox, great catch. First down Syracuse at the 35-yard line. It was complete to Rob Moore, who went upstairs to get it. Then Mike Mays took his legs out from under him, but it goes for 14 yards. Can he get up or what, folks? He has a vertical leap that few others can match. And the agility, it's a fine pass. Now, it's a good defensive play trying to knock the ball loose here by Mays, but watch how Moore wraps that ball up. That's just excellent work by Rob Moore, the young receiver for Syracuse. Out of Hempstead, New York. An all-conference lacrosse player in high school, all-state in football, basketball, and track quite an athlete and the top receiver for the Orangemen. Option play again. First option, Johnston coats it to the 30. Rudy Harmon, inside linebacker of LSU out of Beaumont, Texas, takes him to the turf at that point. It'll be second and about seven. Yeah, we mentioned earlier about Rudy Harmon. He only goes 212 pounds, or he's listed at that size. He took on Johnson, all right, about the line of scrimmage, but Johnson was able to move forward for another three yards. That's 212 pounds is very light for an inside linebacker. Darrell Johnston, in fact, outweighed him. Johnston weighs 230.
position. On the reverse, Moore. Trying to let his blockers form. Thought about cutting back and then dives forward. He does have enough for a first down. Eric Hill covers him after Moore picks up a Syracuse first down on a seven-yard run. This is terrific. LSU comes out, puts three on the board, and Syracuse is coming right back at him. There's no quit in him. Really diversified offensive attack of Syracuse. Forget about the option this time. They run the reverse. Moore does a nice job of getting upfield. I tell you, it was pretty good defensive reaction to contain this play to only about a 10-yard gain. Mike Bednar is out there leading the interference for Syracuse. They've got a first down at the LSU 22. Option again, pitch to Drummond. Drummond tries to get the corner. Blasted out of bounds by Greg Jackson after he picked up four or five yards. Later in today's game, we'll be selecting the outstanding player from each team. Budweiser will donate a total of $2,000 to SAD, Students Against Driving Drunk. Looks like Mays is shaken up on the sideline. Mike Mays starting cornerback for the Tigers. He has started every game for LSU this season and had a knee problem. He missed all of 1986 with a torn knee ligament. Bill Cox, pass complete, Rob Moore again, and Moore is down to the five-yard line of LSU. John Childers on the tackle, but a 13-yard strike. Phil Cox to Moore. Yeah, what I like that time about Syracuse is they went right after Corey Raymond, the replacement for Mike Mays at cornerback. Here we see John Childers having a problem with his leg. Good offensive selection of plays. When you have a backup come into the game because of an injury or what have you, it's been my philosophy as well as a lot of players to attack that backup. If he were as good as the first stringer, he'd be playing someplace. Childers is injured. As you see the play again, Moore catching his fourth pass of the day. And it'll be first down and goal as you see halftime at the Citrus Bowl. Pitch it back to Drummond, and Drummond is collared and driven back to the 10-yard line. Loss of four on the play, the All-American safety, Greg Jackson, coming up in a hurry with Raymond helping out on the play. Boy, I like this game. These teams are both showing a lot of heart, man. I know it's only early third quarter, but it's hot out there, folks. Drummond's been carrying that ball a lot. They're playing without Michael Owens, their other tailback, so Drummond's got to dig down deep this second half to keep gaining some yardage. Just a good play by Jackson, number 35, coming up to make the tackle. It'll be second down and goal from the seven-yard line. 10-10 tie in the Hall of Fame Bowl. Bill Cox, quarterback draw. Hit hard and dropped at the five. Ron Sancho at the bottom of the stack as Phil Cox takes a beating as three Tigers pounced on him, Sancho leading the way. Phil Cox, with that run, has had a good day through the air. He's 10 of 13, Joe. Yeah, his accuracy has been good. He's a very calm, cool, collected quarterback. For a man that only took 20 snaps prior to this season, he has matured a great deal. He doesn't make wrong or bad decisions. You'll rarely see him throw the ball into the coverage, the defensive coverage. Tenth play of the Syracuse drive coming up. Ball just inside the LSU five on third down, and Phil Cox will call for a timeout. Phil Cox lobs it up, and it'll be out of the reach of the intended receiver Moore, but the penalty flag is down. Jimmy Young defending on the play for LSU, and let's see if he's called for interference. That appears to interference be on the defense. Joe, I don't know if that ball was catchable. Well, I'll tell you, Young was in pretty good position, and Moore had to try and run through him. You see right here, Moore's trying to run through him. Young's not doing anything at all. I, I kind of question that call. Young is just holding up some position and playing the ball, but it's a good break for Syracuse. I don't think this ball is catchable either. Look, it. it's going to be way over his head, out of the end zone. I don't believe Moore had a chance to catch it anyway. Can't really tell from that angle because there's no depth perception. In any event, it will be first and goal Syracuse at the LSU 2 as Young is called for pass interference in the end zone. Full house backfield for the Orangemen. And 
touchdown. No, it's not. It's just short. We thought he'd gone over, but not. Johnston was stopped just short of the goal line. Well, I kind of looked for Syracuse to hit that right side again. That's where the big boys are. Tur Turnell Sims at 278 and Bednar's. I mean, these guys are, are 287, 278, and they've been successful running off the right side. So I'd look for them, if they're going to run the ball, to go to the right side a little more instead of just directly up the middle. Again, the full house backfield. Second and goal from the one foot line. And again, they didn't make it. Johnston again got the call, and Ron Sancho right there to meet him. Well, they tried that right side all right, but LSU would have none of it. They've stopped him two plays now, critical down here, and I would have to guess that if Syracuse is held on third down here, that they might go for it, Tom, on fourth down. But this is third down and the big play coming up. Look at Sancho's in there. Oh, boy, there's a whole bunch of LSU Tigers making the stop. Third and goal from the one-foot line. And this time, Syracuse gets it across for the touchdown. Once again, they go over the right side, and it's Drummond that carries in for the score. Now, folks, Syracuse's persistence to go over that right side is no reflection necessarily on the left side. They're just smaller over there on the left side. The big boys up front on that right side opened that hole up, and Drummond pounded it in there. Green will attempt the point after. Remember, that string, an NCAA record, 261 in a row, which is uh, encompassed six kickers. We'll have to go all the way back to November 1978 since a Syracuse kicker missed an extra point. And this one is good. So after getting the benefit of a pass interference call in the end zone, Drummond pounds it across for the Syracuse touchdown, and the Orangemen go up. And Kevin Green ready to kick it off for Syracuse. And the kick taken by Wayne Williams in the end zone, and he'll down it there. So on the touchback, LSU will have the ball at their own 20. Tommy Hodson and company, and the Tigers right now beat up. Let's go to Armin. Thanks, Tom. I was just talking to the trainer from LSU, and his remarks was this team is getting pretty beat up. As you can see over my shoulder here, I believe, Mike May is a cornerback who has a medial sprain of his left ankle. He's just one of the injured at this point. Syracuse is really going after him pretty hard with the field. Joe, Coach Dick McPherson of Syracuse told us he thought last year in the Sugar Bowl that Auburn was shocked that Syracuse could line up and play power football with them. That appears to be the case here again against another SEC team. First down LSU, Hudson, a first down pass out of the hands of the intended receiver, Alvin Lee. Lee just had it bounce off that hands of stone. Yeah, I know. He knows he should have caught that pass. You know, Tom, it's purely coincidence, but last spring, Syracuse coaching staff went to Louisiana State and was able to watch them practice and study their passing game, courtesy of Louisiana State. The year before, they were fortunate enough to go watch Auburn in spring practice. I'd say that's a pretty good coincidence that helped Syracuse prepare for this contest. <laughs> Some pretty good early scouting. UCLA with the lead in the Cotton Bowl on Arkansas. Halftime score. Calvin Windham gets the call for LSU, squirms ahead for a yard or so before Busey and Freiburg make the stop for Syracuse. Hall of Fame Bowl in Tampa, Florida, 534 left in the third quarter. LSU took the ball for this opening possession of the second half, got a field goal to tie it at 10, but then Syracuse just marching down the field, going 57 yards to take a go-ahead touchdown, 17-10. Syracuse leading LSU as we come to the five-minute mark of the third quarter. <laughs> with plenty of time and again complete to Moss and Moss has an LSU first down gain of 10 or 11 on the play and Moss Hodson's favorite receiver with another first down grab and then wrestled down by Ingram and Walker 
Once again, good pass protection, enabling Moss to get downfield and get open, give Hudson the time for him to get open. This defense of Syracuse isn't tired, folks. The offense for Syracuse has been keeping them off the field. This is a good play by Moss and Hudson and good pass protection. Tommy Hudson now has hit 9 of 15 for 115 yards. Wyndham on the pitch, hit behind the line and stumbles forward. Terry Wooden, the man to trip him up. Well, Syracuse has been doing a good job defensively of stopping LSU on first and second down, forcing them into tough, long yardage third down situation. They did this last series of downs. Now they've held them to a no-gainer on first down, and that's one thing that LSU does not like, to be forced into that long yardage situation. Three wide receivers to the left side of the LSU formation. Hudson in trouble this time, sacked at the 20. Good defensive play by the Syracuse Orangemen, their first sack of the game. Burnett and Freiburg all over Hudson. Freiburg and Rob Burnett, they had a little end tackle game. Watch Freiburg loop to the inside there. And here you see number 70, Burnett, go to the outside. They confused the blocking of number 68, Rufin Rodriguez, and was able to get to Hudson for the first time today. Well, speaking of great defense, let's go to Armin Katayan. I'm with one of the greatest defensive players of all time, Leroy Selman, who was an All-American in Oklahoma, later went on to play with Tampa Bay. Leroy, your assessment of the game to date? Hey, it's a great game. I tell you, I think I lost a little bit of contact on what the intensity of college football is all about. These two teams right here just bowing the head and toe, and it's going to be interesting to see what the outcome's going to be. All right, back to you, Tom. All right, Armin. Tommy Hodson going deep for Moss. The pass too long as Ingram was with him stride for stride, and Mangrum came over to help as well. Some words between... Tony Moss and Marcus Paul of the Syracuse defense as Hudson went for the home run, couldn't get it, and it'll be fourth down for LSU. Well, that's one of the things Syracuse does very well is not allow the big pass, the long pass. They'll let them catch the passes underneath, but they haven't given up the big gainer very often this season. First punt of the day for LSU. Renee Bourgeois is on, and Ingram is deep for Syracuse. Bourgeois. Fair catch called for by Ingram. Oops. LSU with an edge in depth. Here's Philcox on the option. It's been very successful. That pitch to Drummond gains about five yards. Drummond bumped out of bounds by the All-American safety Greg Jackson, who played his high school football in Miami. And, of course, Mike Archer on the LSU staff is a former Miami player and assistant coach and knows this area very well and recruits Florida well. You know, Mike Archer was a pretty good baseball player. That's why he left uh, Penn State. His home was up there at College Park. That's why he left to go to Miami to try and play baseball, but he ended up lettering three years as a free safety at the University of Miami and being named their Scholar Athlete of the Year as well. Second and five for Syracuse. The ball now at the 49-yard line of the Orangemen. Phil Cox rolling out. Let's it go, complete. That'll be a Syracuse first down as the catch is made by Glover. Jimmy Young quickly hits him, but a 12-yard gain, and Syracuse once again moving the ball on this vaunted LSU defense. Oh, that was all Glover putting a nice move to the inside and getting outside position on Jimmy Young. And then Phil Cox delivers the ball in the right place. Now, I know Phil Cox doesn't have the quickness and agility of some quarterbacks, but this man moves around quite well for a big quarterback. First down, Syracuse, LSU 39. First man through is Johnston. Lowers his head and bangs across the 30. He's close to another Syracuse first down, almost a 10-yard run. And Corey Raymond, the freshman the safety, almost in self-defense, finally gets Johnston down. Here we see it going off the right side there. Big hole once again. This Syracuse bunch is just playing one well of a game. They don't show any signs of getting tired right now. If anything, it looks like the LSU team that's having a bit of fatigue. First down it is. First down for the Orangemen. 29-yard line of LSU. Two minutes, 15 seconds left. Third quarter, 17-10 Syracuse. Play action pass, Bill Cox sets up a screen, completes it to Drummond. Drummond lets his blockers form and then takes it inside the 20, down to the 19-yard line and close to another first down. 
Mike Merla, substitute LSU linebacker, chased down Drummond on the screen, but Flannery and McCummings out there leading interference for Drummond, and it's another long gainer, another Syracuse first down. A well-executed screen pass. I might add that Blake Bednarz was out there too, Tom, all 287 pounds of him. Watch number 79 to the right of your screen. He's the one that's going to throw that first block outside right here in front of the runner. What a block by Bednarz to open up that huge hole. Todd Philcox under center again. He's only missed three passes all day. This is the option. Pitch it to Drummond. Good defensive play by LSU that time. Jimmy Young fought off the blocker and tripped up Drummond after a gain of two or three yards. Well, that blocker was Glover down there, the wide receiver for Syracuse, and he did a good job of giving some more room for the, for the runner to gain some yardage that time. LSU is reeling a bit here. Syracuse mixing their plays beautifully, and LSU, as I said earlier, appears to be a bit tired. And the Orangemen with the edge on the ground, and so far are showing no signs of fatigue, offensively or defensively. They handle LSU to minus two yards rushing the half. Meanwhile, the Syracuse ground game has gained over 50 in this third period alone. Pitch it again to Drummond. Can't spin away from the tackler, Eric Hill. Hill spins him down. Maybe no gain on the play. Hill, 6'2", 256 pounds, the senior outside linebacker, all SEC. Had been suspended from the team for disciplinary reasons in the spring, but has come back to have a great season and is a definite pro prospect. Well, Phil Cox, would, if he had it to do over again, he might have liked to keep that ball, fake the pitch and keep it, but you're not going to be right every time when they're running those option plays. That was a fine play by Eric Hill. 15 seconds remaining in the third quarter, third and five for the Orangemen. Phil Cox. Complete to the five-yard line. The catch made there. And Syracuse will have it first and goal as Moore pulls in another reception. So Syracuse continues to move the ball. And they'll have it first and goal, already holding a seven-point lead. And they go to Moore at the position that the injured Mike Mays would have been playing. Syracuse trying to take control of the game. First and goal. Eye formation of the backfield. And the give to the fullback, Johnston, who gains a yard and then is stacked up by the LSU defense with Darryl Phillips leading the charge. Yeah, Darryl Phillips got good penetration that time. He was able to avoid the block of John Flannery and getting that backfield to knock Johnston off stride. Much number 62, his quickness on the left side of the screen gets the penetration and trips up Johnston. Ninth play of the drive coming up for Syracuse. They've already covered 53 yards. It's second and goal. The ball just inside the four. Full house backfield. Bill Cox rolling out, looking back the other way for the end zone, incomplete. The intended receiver was Davis, the tight end, and he stumbled a little bit. Some of the Syracuse fans upset. They wanted another flag. Remember, they had a costly pass interference call against LSU in the end zone on the last Syracuse touchdown. Hey, give credit to the cornerback that's in the game now replacing Mays, John Childers. Now, John stayed at home, even though the quarterback rolled out the other way. You see number 37 standing right there. He stayed at home, and he waited for that tight end to come across. A fine play by Childers. Childers, the senior from Orlando, came in after Mays went out with an injury. Third and goal. Bill Cox again rolls to his right. Throws that way for the touchdown. Glover makes the catch. And Syracuse has another score. Well, we just talked about Chowders making a good play, but he couldn't keep up with number 81 Glover that time. He made a valiant effort. Here comes Sancho's 52, but 37 at the top of the screen trying to coverage. He can't quite get out there to make the play on Glover. So Childers celebrated a moment ago, burned that time for the touchdown. Green to try the extra point. Oh, and it's no good. That is a story. Now, we told you that Syracuse had hit 262 in a row, which was an NCAA record.
Ready now for the Syracuse kick as you take a look at the Orangeman bench. Green with the kick. Fuller settles under it at the 11th. Trying to get to the outside. Wrestled down at the 26-yard line. 15-yard return by Fuller. Let's go to the sideline and Armin Kateyev. Thanks, Tom. I'm with Bob Sutton, the driving force behind this game, the chairman of the Hall of Fame Bowl. Bob, you got an exciting game, but it's kind of a shame in a way that you didn't get the type of support from LSU that you had hoped for. Uh, we do. It is a very exciting game, as you can tell by the fans. They're, you know, very vocal, but uh, we expected more people from LSU to come down here and join us, and it is a little disappointing, but they've missed out on a good football game. How many exactly did you have? Well, we're over 50,000 is what we're, we'll say right now, and, uh, of course, there are 50,000 vocal people that are having a great time and a wonderful day. From LSU, how many decided to come to the game? I think we had about 3,100 as compared to about 9,000 from Syracuse, so we uh, we need to work on the Southeast Conference team. You expected about 12,000, though, I guess, to come from LSU. Uh, we did, uh, because they've always followed their team very, very well, and it, uh, it could be because of the date, and they have to go to work the next day, but we were a little disappointed. Thanks, Bob. Back to the booth. All right, Armin, and Bob Sutton has been a very genial host to us, Joe, throughout our stay here in Tampa, as have all the folks associated with the Hall of Fame Bowl. Oh, they have. These players, their parents on both sides that have been down here. My wife and daughter, Deborah and Jessica, we've had a grand time down here. Golfing, going to the beach, the hospitality's been sensational. Alvin Lee made a diving attempt at that first down pass by Hodson, incomplete at second and ten. Hodson chased out of the pocket. Does complete the pass to Jones. And Jones will get only a couple of yards as the Syracuse defense reacts quickly. And still, no sign of fatigue from that Syracuse football team, despite the fact that they have substituted very sparingly. Well, I'll tell you why you don't see those signs of fatigue right now is that was the 15th offensive play that LSU has had the ball this second half. Now, that, this offense of Syracuse has kept the defense well-rested and off the field. So, <laughs> Syracuse is just playing maybe the best game they've played all season. It'll be third and long coming up for the Tigers. Hudson back to pass. Incomplete. Lost the intended receiver and good defense by Chris Ingram of the Orangemen. Ingram, who is from Syracuse, a local product. Once again, though, had this ball been right on target, it could have been a completion. It's a little bit behind Moss. He has to slow down, but Ingram is in excellent position. Look at that. Had the ball been out in front, maybe that hand wouldn't have got in there. But meantime, Chris Ingram just was all over Moss. There's Ingram, who is a former hurdler in high school and used that closing speed to good advantage there. Fourth down, Bourgeois to punt. Ingram lets it bounce, and it'll go out of bounds at about the Syracuse 40-yard line. So worldwide, by Volkswagen, experience German engineering the Volkswagen way. By your friends at Anheuser-Busch, who remind you to use good sense this holiday season, know when to say when. And by NCI, let us show you how much better a long-distance company can be. Tom Hammond, Joe Namath, and Armin Kate in at Tampa Stadium, the Hall of Fame Bowl, 13.05 left in the fourth quarter, and Syracuse with a 23-10 lead on LSU, and there's Mickey Guidry with a separated shoulder, the Tigers' backup quarterback, who was injured in the second quarter after sparking the Tigers. Here's Phil Cox keeping it on the option. Good running by Phil Cox. He's to the 45-yard line of LSU, a 15-yard gain. It looked like he was running in the sand that we saw over at Clearwater Beach, but he still got the job done. <laughs> He's not that quick, but by gosh, he can get the job done. He's an accurate passer. He makes a good decision to keep the ball this time and get upfield. A flawless day for the Syracuse offense so far. No turnovers, no fumbles, no interception. They're played a marvelous game in an evenly matched game as this one appeared to be turnovers we thought might be important LSU has turned it over twice Syracuse has not turned it over Johnston hit at the line of scrimmage bounces off a couple of tacklers and finally goes down with Rudy Harmon at the bottom of the stack 
He's carried 15 times now for 54 yards, has Johnston. Don't forget, at the conclusion of the Hall of Fame Bowl, we'll be going to Arizona to decide the National Collegiate Championship as Notre Dame takes on West Virginia in the Fiesta Bowl, and then in prime time, the Orange Bowl, Miami against Nebraska. A lot of good college football here on NBC. A college football trifecta on Championship Monday. Play action pass, Bill Cox stands in the pocket, and it's knocked down, deflected by one of the Tiger linebackers, Rudy Harmon. Intended for Rob Moore, but good coverage that time as the linebackers were dropping back. Harmon able to knock it down. Well, that caused surprise me. This is really the first time they try to throw the ball this deep down the middle of the field. They've been successful running the ball. The clock is now a factor. I, I'm a little surprised they chose to go to that type of pass play on second down. Now they're in a third down long yardage situation and uh, nearly forced to go back and pass. Phil Cox has been superb, though. He's hit on 14 of 19 for 125 yards and hasn't missed two in a row all day. Set up the screen. Johnston chased down and dropped from behind right at the line of scrimmage. Daryl Phillips, six foot, 255 pounds, had that bulk moving and caught Johnston from behind. Yeah, but that was a good conservative offensive call. They had a chance in getting the ball to one of their best runners outside and maybe pick up the first down, but they didn't really risk the interception by going downfield. They're keeping that clock ticking. It's now 11.30 left, and they have a 13-point lead, the Orangemen do. Gardner in punt formation for the Orangemen. Jackson and Young deep for LSU. Third punt of the day for Gardner. High snap, but he pulls it down and gets it away. Fair catch called for, but they're going to let it bounce. Syracuse can't down it. It goes into the end zone for the touchback, a 42-yard punt. But LSU Ironmen, they have substituted very little today. <laughs> and they're showing a lot of strength and durability out there. You know, one fellow's name I hadn't called today is that of David Bavaro. I know he's out there, but uh, he hasn't been around the ball a great deal. Mike Mays, the LSU cornerback, on crutches and out for the rest of the game. David Bavaro, whose older brother Mark is the New York Giants tight end, is the leading tackler on the year for Syracuse. Hudson, first down pass. Moss can't make a diving catch. He had split Ingram and Mangrum, but the pass a little off target. And it'll be second and 10. Hudson hitting 50% today. He's had those two intercepted. Well, he's frustrated right now. I looked at him after he threw that pass. He said, what can I do? The ball is just a little bit out in front of Moss, but Moss could have made the catch and should have made the catch. When Hudson is a little bit inaccurate, it's incomplete. When he's there with the ball, they're dropping them. LSU is not playing up to their potential. Second and 10 for Hudson and company. Windham in motion. Pass is complete to Williams. Willie Williams, the tight end for about an eight-yard gain. Dan Busey wraps him up. It'll be third and two or three for LSU. Well, they're going to give his forward progress for about a nine-yard gain. So third and short as the Big Orange takes a breather. <laughs> the Big Orange takes a breather. Huh? Hudson found his seldom used tight end that time. And the way he's catching the passes or the balls, I think he ought to go to the tight end more often. Third and one. Window wrapped up and thrown back. He didn't make it. Terry Wooden led the defensive charge for Syracuse. And there's David Bavaro getting a piece of that tackle as well, Joe. David's in there, all right. Excellent play by Syracuse defense. Big decision for Mike Archer right now. But let's watch David Bavaro. Number 59 hit get over there. There is uh, Busey inside. But watch Bavaro come in here, 59 and help out on the tackle. You know, are they going to go for it on fourth down? It's a risky situation on their own 30-yard line. But they are going to go for it. Fourth down and less than a yard to go. And they've got the first down. Egloff on the carry just gets enough for the first down across the 30-yard line. And LSU moves the sticks, keeps the drive alive. They trail 23-10. Just over nine and a half minutes left in the Hall of Fame game. You can bet Mike Archer was holding his breath on that fourth down situation. 
if Syracuse was able to hold LSU here, they'd take over, but no. There's a pretty good hole and some hard fought for yardage that time to make the first down. LSU has only 86 yards rushing today to 176 for Syracuse. Another running play. Eglon, not much. Brooks down at the bottom of the stack for Syracuse. As we come to the nine minute mark, 23 10, Syracuse leading in the fame game. Tom Hammond, Joe Namath, and Armin Katayan with you. Glenn Adamo, our producer, Bob Levy, our director. Terry Ewert is also here with us on the replays. And it's been a good game. Syracuse holding a 23 10 lead. LSU had tied it at 10 to open the second half, but it's been all Syracuse since then. Hudson, second receiver, is Fuller. He has it and is wrestled down short of the 40-yard line by Busey. It'll be third down coming up for LSU. Hudson's getting the receivers open. He's having the time to throw the passes, but these Orangemen from Syracuse are closing quickly on the ball, hitting these receivers and holding them short of the first down. That time, Busey just dropped back into his own defense and reacted to the pass. This is a very big play right here, but I wouldn't uh, be surprised to see, see him go for it twice. They did it on fourth down on their own 30. Third and three here. You see the clock. Plenty of time for Hudson, and the pass is complete. A great catch by Fuller. Marcus Paul was closing in a hurry, and Holmes was coming fast, but Fuller was able to grab it for 11 yards and an LSU first down. Sensational catch. The pass couldn't have been in any other spot because the defensive reaction was right there. Look at Holmes close on that pass. How Fuller was able to hold onto the ball, I don't know, but that was a fine job. Eddie Fuller, who made a clutch catch from Hudson to beat Auburn with a minute, just over a minute left on a fourth down play, makes that reception and LSU in business just short of midfield. Hudson pumps once. Got a man, Moss, wide open, can't get it to him. Tommy Hudson, now 13 of 24 on the day. 13 of 24, and he's getting a lot of time back there to, to throw the ball. You can't give him three and four downs uh, defensively and expect him not to be successful. He's going to find an open receiver unless Syracuse can get some pressure back there on Hudson. Syracuse pass defense ranked 11th in the nation, and as a unit have allowed only three touchdowns through the air this year. They don't give up the big play, but LSU needs one. Hudson throws short, and it's complete to Williams. Williams gains five yards to the 45 of Syracuse, where Bavaro wraps him up. Bavaro and his brother Mark at the tight end. LSU is going to the tight end more often now. Tight ends are special kind of people, too, folks. You know, they have to be big and strong enough to block those huge defensive linemen, yet the tight end has to be agile enough to run downfield, catch the ball, and then run with it. It's a special breed of athlete. Big third down play again for the Tigers with Gidry watching from the sideline, separated shoulder. Hudson chased from the pocket and sacked. Terry Wooden came from his outside linebacker spot and sacked Hudson, the second sack of the day for Syracuse, and that was a big, big play for that Orangeman defense. Well, they went to the blitz that time. They brought their linebacker from the outside, and he was able to break free. Number 90 coming from the outside, jumps inside the offensive tackle. It just makes an outstanding play. This is what the doctor calls for for that Syracuse defense right now. Wooden, who is one of the leading sack getters, as you see, for the Syracuse defense, has put LSU in a hole, and the Tigers with fourth down will go for it. Fourth and 15. Hudson with plenty of time. 
Pass is deflected and it's incomplete. Dan Busey, the inside linebacker, back in coverage, deflected the pass, and the Syracuse defense holds, and the ball goes over on downs. And that's the second time today that the Syracuse defense has made a big play against LSU on fourth down. All the time he needs back there. Hodgson's getting great protection, but Busey is right there to make a diving deflection of the pass. They get him stretch out there and knock it down. That would have been a first down. Archer squad now really needs to stop Syracuse, perhaps cause a turnover and try to get some quick points. Clock working against them and will expect Syracuse to keep it on the ground. Option play. Phil Cox pitches to Drummond. They string the play out and LSU makes the tackle after a gain of two or three on the play by Drummond. However, the clock keeps rolling. Drummond, the senior, enough presence of mind to stay in bounds and keep the clock rolling. LSU has to find a way to stop this ground attack. Right now, they're not getting any penetration. Phil Cox is able to get outside, and Greg Jackson, the defender for LSU, makes a pretty good play outside, but he misses the tackle. <laughs> it's just good running for good yardage, but LSU has to find a way to get penetration right now to stop this running game. Robert Drummond has carried for 114 yards today. Again, the option. Phil Cox again pitches to Drummond, and he's got a first down. Dunbar chased him down, but again, determined running by Drummond, who is well over 100 yards on the day now, and the sticks move as Syracuse first down with an even five minutes left in the game. There are the numbers on Robert Drummond, who maybe is playing his final game, Joe. What sort of feeling is that for a college senior? Well, on the winning side, it's a good feeling. On the losing side, it's awful. But you know, you do think about the years you spent there, the camaraderie in school, the camaraderie with your teammates, and, uh, you know, leaving it behind, it's, it's sad. There's no doubt about it, but the win would make you feel a lot better. Here's a surprise. Syracuse goes to the air, and the catch made by Moore at the 25-yard line, short of a first down. Childers covers him at that point. Yeah, that surprised me. As good as the running game has been uh, to Syracuse, why they take a chance and putting it in the air to stop the clock. But I tell you, when you're running an offense and you're efficient, Todd Fieldcox feels good about what he's doing out there. They feel like they can do anything at this point. The screen passes, throwing the ball downfield, running the ball. Coach McPherson has these guys well prepared for this game. Second down for the Orangemen, second and three from the LSU 25-yard line. Johnston, good running by the fullback, just tripped up at the 15-yard line. Another Syracuse first down. Greg Jackson got a hand in there to trip up Johnston, or he was gone. Those people up in New York are remember the Jet days with a big fullback and Matt Snell. You give me a big fullback like Johnston, buddy, I'd love it because he's going to block, he's going to tackle, and run with power up that middle. Well, one of the reasons he had such a big hole was a holding call against Syracuse, so that'll nullify the play and the step off. On the offense, still second down. Against the Orangemen, it'll take it back to the 32-yard line, 33-yard line, we'll call it. And again, it'll be second down for the Orangemen. We've really had a minimal number of penalties. This has been a well-played game, uh, especially by Syracuse, but we haven't seen the, the silly errors, the offsides, the in-motion penalties. This is the first holding call that I recall. We may have had another one, but it's just a well-played game by certainly Syracuse. Four penalties against Syracuse, only three against LSU, just to back up your point. Now they'll take another step off, and they'll put the ball at the 35-yard line. Finally had a little trouble uh, spotting the ball. They'll put it at the 35 and make it second down for Syracuse and about 13 to go for a first down. Fiesta Bowl coming up next. West Virginia, Notre Dame at the conclusion of the Hall of Fame Bowl. Bill Cox to pass and... I don't know who he was intending it for, Moore or Glover. It was right in between them and didn't really have a chance for a completion. Stops the clock at 327, brings up a third down. Carl Dunbar, LSU's fine defensive end, shaken up. Well, Phil Cox misfired one of the few times. Fane ball and Syracuse in control up on LSU, 23 to 10. This is a third and 13 for the Orangemen. Bill Cox will pass, and he'll pass deep. 
Incomplete. Almost intercepted. A dangerous pass. They haven't committed a turnover all day. And why do they risk one there, Joe? Well, I don't know because I, I would like to keep the clock running. But meantime, an interception in that area could actually work out to benefit Syracuse or could have. I mean, had he intercepted the pass downfield here, they'd have been down around the five, six, seven yard line with their backs to the wall. But he doesn't really get, the young doesn't really get his hands on the pass, but even though uh, it had a chance for an interception, it wasn't a bad call. There's the record for Coach Mack, who sends his field goal unit out, and Green tries a 52-yarder. It's going to be well short. He punted the ball. He punted the ball, and Syracuse downs it at the one. Well, they lined up in field goal formation. Instead, they punted the ball, and it's down at the one-yard line, and Joe, that could just about wrap it up. A great play by Syracuse. The field goal unit instead punts the ball. Yeah, that was a surprise. It surprised everyone here. Green gets the ball in excellent position. Now LSU is backed up. Syracuse have tried uh, this pooch-style punting. They have a special punter for that, Brian Griffith. And uh, this time, they pulled it off with their uh, field goal kicker. So <laughs> that was just a fine part of the Syracuse kicking game. Here's the end of it. It'll go as a 31-yard punt, more importantly, downed by the Orangemen inside the four-yard line of LSU. Tommy Hodson down the sideline and incomplete. Too long for the intended receiver, Alvin Lee. And Lee took a crack to the head from Jeff Buskirk, who is in at a nickelback position for Syracuse. He took a shot, Joe. Oh, it's tough to get out of that hole down there. You know, I think I just said something about pooch punting and talked about the LSU system of pooch punting. Well, here it just bounces back to get him. Maybe we'll get a shot of, or a look at what kind of shot he takes here. Ball's a little bit out of bounds over his head, and it's a pretty good hit laid on him. Jeff Buskirk, the senior out of Whitehall, Pennsylvania. second down play and a play action pass Hodson across the middle and that one's incomplete Eddie Fuller the intended receiver there and well covered pass a little high as well Bavaro and Buskirk were stride for stride with Fuller out of the backfield yeah Fuller knew there was somebody back there waiting on him too it's tough for a receiver running down that field knowing that someone is waiting on you to stretch yourself out and go for the ball he just couldn't reach far enough for it I believe Fuller knew he was going to take a hit that time though Alvin Lee, as you saw, on his feet on the LSU sideline now, trying to clear out the cobwebs. Third down and 10 for the Tigers. The clock shows 3.08. Syracuse leading 23-10. From his own end zone, Hodson throws that one way off the mark. Keith Freiberg, I think, hit Hodson's arm as he came forward. Wyndham, the intended receiver, not even close. And they're going to have to punt it here. <laughs> I'm afraid they are, folks. Syracuse has just come up with some big plays. The senior linebacker, Freiburg, that time just knocked the ball off target, kind of hit Hodson's hand that time, and Hodson shows his frustration as he goes to the sideline. Bourgeois will punt from his own end zone, right at the back edge of the end zone. Bounces and is down at about the 32-yard line. Didn't even come close to Ingram, who was back to get it. 28-yard punt by Rene Bourgeois. 23-10 with 2.54 left. Tommy Hodson on the LSU sideline has hit 14 of 29. Hodson and Philcox has been nearly flawless. And the Syracuse Orangemen are about to up their record on the season to 10 and 2. They lost only to West Virginia and Ohio State during the regular season. Oddly enough, Ohio State, which had a disappointing season, owned victories over each of these two teams, LSU and Syracuse. Johnston, power straight ahead as Syracuse works on the clock. Sancho will get credit for the tackle. The big running star for Syracuse today has been Robert Drummond. Who is up to 122 yards rushing against a tough LSU defense. You know he's in some kind of great physical condition. To carry the ball as often as he has in this kind of heat 
He's used to getting some relief work from Michael Owens uh, earlier in the season to, to carry the load himself this entire game. Drummond's just done a marvelous job. He has played every offensive play of the game, has Robert Drummond. Johnston again gets the call, not much there. Leading the swarm of LSU defenders is Daryl Phillips as we come to the two-minute mark. And with two minutes to go, let's check the Syracuse report card for this Hall of Fame game. Phil Cox, 16 of 23, a big day for him. Drummond, 122 yards, two scores, Moore caught six balls. The special teams have been good, and Syracuse playing almost error-free football, Joe. And that young offensive line, four sophomores and a junior, Bernard McCummings, Flannery, Bednars, and Sims have just done a marvelous job. They have a lot to look forward to next season. There's a almost turnover, fumbled out of bounds by Drummond. It'll still be Syracuse's football, and we thought we might see fatigue. We thought LSU had the edge in depth. LSU's depth did not come into play today. Hodson passed for 149 yards, but hit on less than 50%. Mickey Gidry, the backup quarterback, injured on his third or fourth play in the game and did not return. Wyndham, who was not a starter, has been their leading rusher. They haven't done anything on the ground. And Moss held in relative check. And the LSU Tigers turning it over twice on the two interceptions by Hodson. Oh, that secondary of Syracuse has really played well today. Will this be a field goal? Let's see. They're lined up to try a field goal again 45 yards this one will go on its way by green and it will be short lsu will get the ball at the 20 yard line with only a minute 23 seconds left what about tommy hodson if he has a normal year next year for lsu joe he will finish with over 9,000 yards passing and when the next season begins he will need only 1125 passing yards to be the best ever in the southeastern conference he's had a remarkable few years down there at lsu he's really a highly visible young man he's for the first time this season, he was booed in, in his own uh, backyard, and he lost some of his confidence. But we're going to see a lot of big things out of him in the future. He has a strong enough arm to get better. He's reading defenses uh, pretty darn well. But his confidence uh, needs to be improved a little bit, and that'll happen with good play. First down play for LSU. Hodson rolls out, completes it to Moss. Moss shakes one tackler with that spin move into Syracuse territory to the 48-yard line. 23-yard gain. Well, let's take a look now at our Budweiser Outstanding Players for today's Hall of Fame Bowl. First from LSU, they're all SEC outside linebacker Ron Sancho, who is in on a number of tackles for the Tigers today. And from the Syracuse Orangemen. It'll be Robert Drummond, who led the ground attack for Syracuse, had over 120 yards rushing on the afternoon and played every play without relief in that offensive set of Syracuse. Anheuser-Busch will donate $1,000 in the name of each MVP to SAD, Students Against Driving Drunk. Joe, it's been a very impressive performance by Syracuse today after going uh, undefeated with only the tie in the Sugar Bowl last year and then 10-2 and two this year. They have proven that they're on the right tack uh, for Coach Dick McPherson and a power to be reckoned with not only in the East but in all of college football. Yes, they certainly are. The boys from the North came down to, to whip the SEC and uh, uh, Southeastern Conference's Tigers. They have to feel mighty good about that, and there are going to be some big things for them next year. Uh, I, I believe that Elvin Lee... Ball fouls on the offense, penalized in accordance of occurrence. Well, the pass play, the long pass play, is called back penalties against LSU after the ball was dead to personal fouls against LSU. They total the yardage up, so the play counts, the ball was dead, and then two personal fouls against the Tigers. They've stepped it all the way back to the LSU 23-yard line. Boy, that's a tough time to lose your cool and get a personal, <laughs> get a foul called on you. My goodness, they had a chance and in, in, in decent position to get something on the board, and who knows what could happen with an onside kick, but uh, I guess they just lost their cool out there and started throwing their arms around. I know I saw Elvin Lee downfield messing with the defensive back, and he definitely was called for one of the penalties. Well, remember, Lee had taken a shot to the helmet earlier and maybe was trying to get uh, revenge, and they nabbed him. 
Don't forget, coming up, the Fiesta Bowl. Number one, Notre Dame. Number three, West Virginia. It should be a great contest to decide the national championship. And in case it's not decisive, of course, the Orange Bowl tonight with Miami. They feel they're still in the hunt for the national title as they take on tough Nebraska. Fiesta Bowl coming up from Arizona next. Notre Dame and West Virginia. First down, it's first down and 40. <laughs> I'm glad you figured that out, Tom. I was trying to count and couldn't get that high. Danny Green, our stats man, is responsible for that, Joe. I can't take credit. I can't see that far. Vincent Fuller makes the reception from Hudson. He gets out of bounds, stopping the clock at 102. Jeff Mangrum gave him plenty of room and then nudged him out of bounds. <laughs> Disappointed bunch of LSU Tigers. <laughs> they were whipped, Tom. You know, disappointed. They're whipped over there. This Syracuse team put it on them. Coach McPherson saying that these SEC teams don't expect them to be able to play hard-nosed football with them, and they proved it to Auburn last year. They're proving it to LSU today. Rob Burnett, one of those tough guys up front for the Orangemen, knocks that pass to the turf with 59 seconds left. Burnett, a good pass rusher and only a junior. There's Mike Archer once again. He sure isn't happy about this. But this Syracuse bunch has a lot of young players returning. There's a question about their secondary because they had five seniors back there. But that young offensive line and this young defensive line, and hey, they're going to have a big year next season. This is a third and 21 play, and it's intercepted. Third interception of the day for Syracuse. David Holmes picks off the pass. It was intended for Tolbert and David Holmes with the interception as the Syracuse defense, that pass defense, allowed only three passing touchdowns all year. The number one unit only allowed two. And Joe, they have proven today that they are for real. It's a remarkable secondary they have. Without getting a good bit of pass pressure on the quarterback, they do a marvelous job of coverage. Holmes is in such excellent position here. It's like he was running the pass pattern. Third turnover of the day for the LSU Tigers as David Holmes, the senior out of Burlington, New Jersey, picks off the pass. There's the turnover situation, which has been a big part of the game. And with 50 seconds left, Syracuse will salt it away. Johnston carries the ball. Well, we've already done our MVPs, and it was a tough call between Drummond and Phil Cox, who's had an excellent game. Daryl Johnston has had a big game for Syracuse, and what about David Holmes with two <laughs> pass interceptions? I wouldn't be surprised if, if each and every one of the defensive players and offensive players got a game ball from this game. I mean, Syracuse just performed brilliantly in all phases of the game. And the celebration about to erupt in the stands, where there's a lot of orange today, and along the sideline where the Syracuse players celebrate their 10th victory of the season. Keep the clock running. Johnston again draws a crowd, but the Syracuse Orangemen, with one second left, they stopped the clock because he picked up a first down, but they'll restart it, and the game will come to an end. And Syracuse, with a very impressive performance, saw LSU tie the score at 10 to open the second half, then got the offense cranked up, the defense held steady, and the Orangemen win it by a 23 to 10 count over LSU. Syracuse will go to 10 and 2 on the season. Over the last two years, they are 21 wins, two losses, and one tie, which is the third best in all of college football behind only Miami and Florida State. The LSU Tigers, co-champions of the Southeastern Conference, lose for the fourth time this season against eight wins. And there you see the LSU players and Coach McPherson exchanging handshakes at midfield. The Hall of Fame Bowl.